there was a, I was at a, um, it, was, it was like a pretty big like music expo uh, last year, and the guy um, had to like go through his files to find a file to show everyone, and like when he was going through, like you saw like uh, like 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 there was like a folder called porn. And like, uh, and it was like hundreds of people, like on his desktop, you know. And like, it was like the most like funniest thing ever. Uh, so I always laugh at that, like when I'm going through here, like if like if like I'll see like weird stuff, but apparently not, but you know, just as well. But I don't know. I always like think like those kind of stories are like hilarious. I mean, it's funny when like it's you and your friends, like, like you're chuckling in the back, like, oh my god, like, did you just see that? Yeah, I just saw it. Did I just see it? Um, okay, so here, um, so what I want to talk about really quick, I'm going to trigger this wire, by the way. Um, what I want to talk about really quick is that the money is in the archive, okay? So, um, is that, um, is that when I record a video, is that, okay, right now I'm speaking to everyone, but that when I go home, I'm not making money while I'm sleeping after speaking this gig. So the thing is, the, the trick, at least if you're building like an online community, is to um, uh, is to is to try and archive everything: music, blogs, videos, all like all these things that like, you upload once and you make money while you're sleeping. So the money is in the archive. That's why like I have over 400 video tutorials on YouTube that are getting that are making money every second. And even like while I'm sleeping, so that's how like you really make a lot of money. Um, and then the, uh, the the next thing that I want to talk about uh, is how to grow a community. So um, sorry, what is that? Uh, check it out. No, you know what I know. No, okay. I this was right it's cool. Don't sweat it. All right, we're still friends. <laughs> um, okay, so the next thing that I want to talk about is a. How to grow uh, a community from the ground up, and the only way to do it is, is just to do it really organically. I mean, just think, it's like um, you know that my friend Mike Lewis said to me, and, and I thought that this was awesome. Is that when you're trying to grow a community, you're not trying to build a fan base, you're trying to build a friend base, and I thought that was the coolest thing ever because like. Because um, the more authentic that you are in your videos, like my videos, like look, like, it's just me in, in my apartment. Like, like there's like my sofa on the back. It's just like me, and like here's like, like you know, like whatever. And um, you know, it's like very like, authentic, you know, like it's like very kind of like cool. Um, but then my strings, my guitar, that's the, the Tech 21, uh, amp, uh, Tech 21 amplifier. My shirt here is sponsored, my books on the back are sponsored, um, you know, all that stuff. It's, it's just like really kind of hip, but like not be like a suit kind of talking to people. Plus it's like 15 year old kids who want to learn how to play guitar, so they don't want to be, you know, spoken to, they want to be spoken, uh, you know, with. Um, so that's the, that's the idea of like making it organic, um, and that you want to be the last man standing. This is what I said, it's like it took me six months to make, to, to make my first dollar, um, but that if, if I stopped at the five, like I would have never known. So I just kept on going. Um, and then a, a, another thing is uh, this is actually what Gary had said to me, um, which I thought was awesome. Is the idea is that if you were to have a website, like let's say like Pink Socks, I don't know. Okay, so Pink Socks. See all this on the side, like these Google AdSense stuff. These are companies that are paying to get the exact word, pink socks, in their market, right? Um, so if you had a blog on pink socks or a blog on like selling shirts or something, do a Google search for it, and then wherever like the Google ads are on the side, these are the, are, these are the people that you should be calling. So like me personally, like that if I do, you know, guitar, the hell, if I do like guitar lessons, uh, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe not guitar. Uh, well, guitar lessons are part of the market. Is I would be targeting other my competition, not other tech sponsors. Uh, but the idea is like I would call all, all all of these people and say, "Hey, I got a big music blog. Check it out, blah blah." blah. And so that's how I, I would find like my target market. Uh, are there any questions yet? I couldn't imagine not one question. Nothing. Yeah. Do your sponsors promote you in turn? No, no, okay. they, no, they don't. Uh, I, I, 
the way that I do it though is that when I become their sponsor, uh, is that like my actual SEO and everything, like I'll blog about them more. So people who are who are doing searches um, through like Ovation Guitars or, or something, they might find they might find find my blog now that I can talk about Ovation being a part of the show. Okay. Yeah, but they don't like they. I, sh I mean, I shouldn't say that. I mean, like they like they do sometimes. Like if I have a like giveaway or something for a guitar, they'll send out a newsletter that you can win a guitar by going to Walt's site. They don't generally like you know put me on their website or anything crazy. Yeah. Uh, cool. But I, I mean, uh, excuse me, I did miss yeah. uh, some of this, but you mentioned it, uh, like, so you, you're, you're sponsored, you mentioned your books are spon sponsored, and your yeah. general, uh, and, and your, uh, did you say your t-shirt your was My t-shirts are sponsored, yeah. Right. right. So, uh, those, um... Not, well, not this one. There's <laughs> <laughs> not the mirror. This is the pocket one, though. Yeah, so, um, the, the deal is that, um, do they, they pay you to, to use their uh, book, t-shirt, guitar, or do they just give it, give you stuff for free, or um, how it's does the sponsorship work? Uh, when I first was doing it, I had to give stuff away for free and not get paid for it, but then as I, my community started growing out, I was getting more leverage, and um, I was able to say, well, I'll give it away for free, but you also have to pay me to be in the video now. So that's how it works. Like, when I first did it, I had no leverage, uh, but, now, but now I do, so they have to pay me. To be in my community, period. But but they period don't. Uh, but but they pay you. But they don't. Uh, as he was saying, they don't link you to. Uh, they don't put you on their site. No. No. It's like I mean, it's all stuff that's just like, um, you know, here's whatever blah blah. We want you to like, give away surveillance or something. In fact, tomorrow, not tomorrow, on Tuesday, I'm giving away uh, surveillance. Uh, not that I don't care. I'm just saying, it's like, I'm doing like another giveaway. And like and like. You know, people love that stuff. You know, like people love it. The, uh, the music notation so, so right. software. Yes. Right. Yes. And the way, and here, here's a cool, a, a like, cool trick too is that the way that I do giveaways is that I'll make a video saying what, like, I'll hold the product where I'll do a video screen capture of it, and I'll say, hey guys, comment in the video below as many times as you want. And I'll pick a number from one to however many comments there there are. You know, I'll pick a random number, and that winner will win Sibelius. So what will happen is that like one of my videos, like after that, within like the first like, couple hours, will get thousands of comments, and so it'll actually get to the front page of, of YouTube as like the most commented. Uh, so then like the rich get richer kind of like that the most popular videos, those commented videos. Uh, become more commented and create all this like kind of like you know like people talking like trying to win. So um, you know like that like my giveaways get like you know a lot a lot of hits because I let people comment and you know like they'll comment trying like trying to win you know. So like, like a guy will comment like maybe ten seconds, but you multiply it by thousands of, of subscribers. So like my videos will get tons of comments. Everyone's trying to win. And then within like a couple of hours, it's all like the front page like YouTube's most commented, which is pretty cool. So that's like a cool like tip. If anyone wants to know about how to do like video giveaways, I think uh, if you're trying to build like an online community, I think that's a cool little trick. Um, so we're let me uh, go in. Let's see. Um, one of the things that I think is uh, you know really I think important is that people tend to like tackle like a thousand websites. You know, um, like you don't have to go on Bebo or you know Fred Feed like all these other like you know. Like, like crazy sites. I just pick six. Um, my RSS feed, which is awesome, it's like my personal communication tool, which is kind of the same as like an email newsletter, but it's not. Uh, I do Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Dig. And the reason why my LinkedIn is here is because um, a lot of the traffic that I get, I've made a lot of money from people that I've made connections online, and they've actually hired me to do stuff for them, and, and, they, and they connect with me through LinkedIn. So, like, does that make sense how I said that? No. No, uh, okay. no uh, LinkedIn, um, that's uh, thought of as more of a, uh, you know, pro, uh, business professional site. So what are you doing on there exactly? Well, teaching. I'm... Oh. Teaching. He's a business professional. I, I, I know, but uh, I didn't mean to be flipped, but uh, 
explain that a little more. Oh, okay. So like I'll like I'll um like teach all day, and if people want to like connect with me through LinkedIn or like hire me for a job or something, they I leave this LinkedIn up here so people can like find you know like so people can like find me, see like my resume, or, like the companies that I've, that I've worked with, what I've done for them, who my network is in like in business, and either like hire me to like speak for them or to teach them like a huge master class or if it's like producing stuff um you know i kind of like leverage it all it's you know, an online all promotional online. resume that's it I, yeah this is i mean this is basically like my resume no I mean, yeah. i'm just curious because uh you, you, i mean when you think of music you think of uh, facebook and uh and do you have my space up there i don't uh -huh. no um and um but you and you think of twitter but you don't necessarily think of LinkedIn, uh, so I'm, that's well, new, new to me. So. No, 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 no. Uh, I think I think that, that the problem is that most musicians don't think business, you know. And and I'm not saying this is like a music thing. I think that like what I've done for music, you can do if you're trying to sell, you know, belts or something. You know, it's, it's like I think it's good. I mean, the most important part about being online is being offline. So I think that if I can connect with someone online. Uh, you know, through LinkedIn, or like they see what I've done here, they can connect with me through LinkedIn, then and then we have coffee in Manhattan, and I can, you know, work with them. I I I think that's like the whole purpose of social media. It's like I think people get so trapped up on like using Twitter. It's like I tweet maybe like twice a day. It's like I don't even like really use it. But um, I mean, it, like all like all I care about is that I teach music lessons to people. But um, I, I do want to talk about this too, is the, the idea of like triple dipping, I think is really good when you're trying to grow a community or grow a business, is that uh, the idea is like, but I have like this like music blog here, uh, and then I have sponsors, obviously on the right, and then I've got Google AdSense, which is cool. But what people like tend to forget a lot is that I'm triple dipping. Like when you come here to like read music or whatever, I'm actually also selling my music too. And I'm selling shirts and stuff. So I'm like triple dipping. Like you might come here um, you know, to get a free music lesson, but then you might buy ten dollars of my music. Like, you might buy like a CD or something, or you might buy like a fifty dollar shirt. And so all so all of these things are things that are happening in the archive because I'm sleeping while this is all happening. And so I think that's really effective uh, when you're trying to like grow a community. Uh, like also trying to learn how to monetize it, and don't be shy about people making, you know, about people paying you. Like, I'm doing a lot for my students, and uh, I'm doing a lot for my sponsors. So I don't feel guilty if I'm charging a lot of money to sponsors. Okay. Uh, so the music and the score you can combine. Um, yeah. That's like a normal, regular score. Well, the store is like. Because I, I mean, you said that you're completely paid by sponsors, mm -hmm. so I kind of have you a little bit confused. Okay, what? like, um, well, yeah, well, that's like for the for my actual music lessons. So, oh, for um, the lessons, it's all sponsors for the store. Yeah, well, like, well, like the store is just like another way to make a lot of money. Um, <laughs> that's it. I don't know how this is put. It's just another way to make a lot of money. Uh, so, um, you know, I have like here, like here, like here, like here's my store. So, well, it's my teacher or something. Um, and you know, it's like that they want to pimp it out, like they want to, you know, wear it. Um, so, like, I'll, I'll, I'll have the store and I'll sell my music too. And it's the option here you, 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 you can get it for free or you can buy it, you can do whatever. Uh, and then here are my sponsors. And the thing about these, about the sponsors that I want to talk about, is that my sponsors are a thousand dollars a month, and so I have seven of them. And um, like it started out with fifty, but now it's a thousand to get on there because my community is big now. Um, and so I also have Google AdSense, which you know is like all in my videos, like you know in like a YouTube video or, or whatever. Uh, and then I also sell. My shirts and stuff, and then I sell my music, and so all these things collectively. Plus, I I leverage all of my social media presence uh, through my LinkedIn profile, and then uh, the Independent Music Awards actually approached me now, and I'm now the director of media of like new media, I guess, uh, for the Independent Music Awards. So all this stuff is happening 
Uh, and like that's how like, I've leveraged throughout my community. So I, I work for the Independent News Awards, and then I run this full time, and I, I just started a new blog called For Orchestra. And, and basically I arrange guilty pop pleasures for orchestra, but that's a whole other thing. But uh, that's the, the idea of like, of like monetizing. It's like start thinking outside of the box and like don't and don't be afraid to like express yourself too. It's like that if you're a huge um, you know fan of like black tea or something, like don't be afraid to like drink black tea like in your podcast or like in you know or like talk about it one day in your blog or something. Like people are like, you know, like just be you. I mean the thing is that my friend always says is like to be a rat, you know, is that is that rats win. So you want to be real, authentic, and transparent. So like R, like R A T. So like you want to be, you want to be a rat. Um, and so what I want to talk about really quick up here is you're better off tackling six sites and generating a community through those six sites rather than going to like 50 different sites. Uh, this is like. I'm, I'm on six sites. I mean, this is a site, you know, obviously this is not really much and that's not much. But like, I'll just tackle these three and just grow my community through those three websites and that's it. So I don't have like a whole lot of people who, who are following me on Twitter. Um, let me see if I do this. I only have 3,400, but that it's literally the, the biggest like movers and shakers of like the music industry. Um, so it's a lot of influencers who are actually on, um, you know, like my like Twitter people, you know. So that's all. It's like I, I'm, I'm like I'm, I'm not about like huge like huge numbers. Like my YouTube, I think I have like eight thousand or nine or nine thousand, uh, and then like my hits on my website are like, you know, pretty big. But uh, but like but like that's like the that's the, the gist of it. It's like very targeted targeted marketing, and then just nurturing them. Having sponsors and then just growing your community organically. It's, I mean, it's all about like very organic. Like, don't worry about viral marketing. Like, I think viral is dead. Uh, I think viral is something from like 2006 when like, when when a guy gets like gets like kicked in the nuts and like falls down a flight of stairs or something. It's like I think that's like what viral was. Like, it's not really happening anymore. But um, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like that. If you wanted to, you know, fall down a flight of stairs and get hits on your website or something, I guess that could work. But uh, did anyone have questions or? Sure. sure. Uh, you, uh, one thing I noticed, um, uh, you, you, your music, your MP, those are MP3s, mm -hmm. uh, and the covers are MP3s, or are the are the arrangements and tab or? or uh, the covers are also are also MP3s, but I can't sell. I I can't give them away for free. Uh, okay, but my question was, um, if you're uh, doing an MP3 cover and selling it, you, you must be going to Harry Fox a lot. And, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. And. Um, uh, do those fees uh, run you much at Harry Fox? No. Uh, well, Harry Fox is fifteen dollars uh, for the license to sell it, and uh, you pay nine point one cents for 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 every sale. So I sell for a dollar, so I get them nine point one cents for every sale. Oh, I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 and uh, also, you mentioned Google AdSense. Yeah. What, uh, can you explain Google AdSense? Yeah, so is everyone here familiar with Google AdSense at all or no? No one is? I okay. Well, okay. All right, so that the idea is like what, I, what I'm saying before. It's like, um, like that when you do a search, and I'll just do uh, this. Like if you do a search on Google, um, all right, I'm just type it. You gotta be kidding me. Hold on. La, la, la. Okay. So if I do a search on Google and I go um, black tea, sure, black black tea. I knew that the black keys were going to show up. Uh, okay, so the black key, well, no one's going to buy AdSense word for black key, but here. Let me, What's that uh, black tea? Oh, bla oh, black tea. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, that actually. Uh -huh. All right, so, uh, all right, so. Your Google AdSense, like if you're in the Google AdSense, per, not if you're in it, but if you uh, like subscribe to it, or if you how, how, if, if you pay to be in it, um, then you can buy certain keywords. So obviously these people here are paying, so that when you're in this key keyword, they show up, and it's a hugely targeted ad, you know, targeted ad. So the same thing with video is that. When you're on YouTube and you type in black ice or black tea, um, and you're watching a video about black tea, 
these instead of being on the side will actually show up in the YouTube video. So I'm gonna, like if I were to go like here, like YouTube, and like let's say um, you know, uh, all right. So this is a video that I did. Hugs and handshakes make make the difference. I do I do a lot of like of, of like marketing, but right here, see see this like yellow tab. A Google AdSense thing will pop up right here. And so you can buy for no blues thing. But anyway, it's a very hard, it's a very target market. Um, and so here, like for example, like at this video, I'm talking about the idea of like going offline. It's more important than being online. Uh, whereas like hugs and handshakes make the difference. And being intimate uh, and like meeting people, like wanting to get to like know them is, is like the way to win. Um, but that's the idea of like the Google AdSense here, just so you know. And that if someone were to buy something, and like click on this link, I get paid for that. And so that's where I talk about that the money is in, is in the archive. And that's this is just me like on my phone when I'm coming out like walking down the street, you know. Um, but that's all. So um, so how much do you have to pay Google AdSense? Uh, nothing. They pay they pay me. I'm I'm if you're in the YouTube Partner Program, then you get paid. For your videos, so this is, like that makes sense. Like I'm uploading content to YouTube, and Google AdSense is showing over the video, and I'm getting paid every time someone watches the video. Is that no? Does everyone under, like understand that or no? I think it's yeah. when it's because there's really like two components to it. There's Google AdWords, which is AdWords. the business who's like placing the ad, and then there's the website person who has Google AdSense, which is where Google pays you for the people who Google AdWords to post the ads. Yes. Again, so yeah. There's like two components to that. Yeah. So the company appears on a YouTube video, they're paying Google to put it on people's websites and YouTube videos. And then Google pays the website owner to have that um, ad up. Yeah. Um, you know, are there any more questions? Like, should I get more specific? Or is like that? Everyone got that? Like, does, like, okay. So, does anyone have questions about like growing your community? Like, what? So, like, what are some of your problems in terms of growing? I mean, because everyone's different, but that's how I do it. And I didn't know. Like, I mean, obviously, like everything's different. Like, if you're growing a different community than music, you've been very articulate about how you grew. Business side and the promotion, if mm -hmm. you will. How did you grow the user side or the subscriber side or the young kids who want to learn guitar? How did oh. you build that? Okay. Um, don't. Um, the way that, that I do it is like, don't be afraid to put your community to work. Okay. People want to be um, a part of something, you know. And that the way to really win someone over is to make them invest in you. And this is with everything, like even in business, uh, you know, let alone growing a like, you know, music community or any community, is that when um, when a student comes to me and they're like, oh my god, thanks for the video, if it's just like one person, you know, like thanks for the video, is there is there is there anything that, that I can do? And I'm like, yeah, actually you can. And you tell all your friends in high school like all about my podcast. And so like they'll help me. Uh, sometimes um, grow my community, and so it's all about like reaching out and putting your community to work with you. Like that, like my first week, it was just a one-to-one -one thing. It was like just me, and, like one person, and then the next week it was like me, and, like five people. And so I just kind of grew organically. Like I would go on forums and blogs, and I would tell them like, hey, I just started this music podcast. Check it out. Or you know, I would like email podcasters and say. Hey, um, you know, can you interview me? Blah blah. blah. They say, you know, they might say yes or no. But the idea is that you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. So if someone says no to me, or if a student says no, I'm not going to tell anyone. Then you're at the same spot that you were 10 minutes before you asked them. So it doesn't really matter. But except that's a way that I've done it is growing it organically and over months. I mean, I didn't monetize until six months, and the reason why is because I didn't have a community until six months. So, um, and it was stupid. I actually left my job in order to start this podcast. And like for the first six months, I was like, but, um, <laughs> what was your job? Um, my, uh, my, my, uh, my old job um, was I was a music lesson teacher. I was an, an, an instructor at a pretty popular um, 
music lesson school in like South Jersey. I used to live in, in South Jersey and I went to school in Philly. And then uh, I left and I canceled all my students and I just did it and did this thing full time, like doing videos and vlogs every day and calling sponsors. And like the one month that they would say no, I'm like, fuck, like how am I gonna get to like my next check, you know? So then like it was that a lot and like you know, eating moms like pasta and stuff was you know, always helped. But like that, I mean that was the idea. It's just like kind of like growing it organically. Um, and then like my first fifty dollar check like went to food and like that was it. Then it's like it got better and better. And now it's been almost two years. And so um, yeah, it's been it's, you know, it's been kind of real. Do you have a question there? Yeah. Um sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I say um, with the growing the community part. I help with the nonprofit in Chicago, and it's really, I think, what Walt's doing a fantastic job of your, your niche and being relevant with your content. I mean, his videos, obviously, kids are probably searching for how to play guitar, and they find a plethora of Walt Barbero videos. So, and then what I do, like, with the nonprofit I'm working with, it's all content that's relevant to uh, everything around that nonprofit and the activity, the industry, what the what my users are interested in as well. So it's what you're doing is what what are the kids or your audience? What are they looking for? Um, and that's that maybe is just asking them. You know, it, it's participating, engaging your audience, being able to have a two-way conversation, which I think is what Walt does fantastically, and providing content that they want to see, and and maybe even nudging them in the stuff that they possibly want to see, and that's what he does really well. Am I, just in clarification, yeah. to his point, and your the way you operate, are all the lessons on YouTube? Is that where the oh, students yeah. find the lessons? Yeah, like I used to like two. Is anyone here familiar with TubeMobile or UStream at all, or not? YouTube. Yeah. Uh, oh, U, UStream. Okay. Um, so UStream is like a live video service, uh, and so I I actually use this. Is, I mean, this is kind of kind of like how I did it. It's like. Um, I I I would use stream, like, like for like for like hours of me teaching, and so like here below is um is like a live chat. You can't really see it; it's kind of shitty. But there's a live chat going on here, and so like they would ask me questions live on UStream, um, you know, about like how to play guitar or whatever. So. In a one hour YouStream lesson, I would have one hour's worth of content and I would cut that into like 10, 10 or like into like 10, six minute videos. And then I would have them set up to be dispersed every day for the next 10, 10 days. So within one hour's worth of work, I don't have to work for the next 10 days now and my blog is making money for me while I'm sleeping. So like that's how I mean, that's like what I'm talking about, is like thinking outside the box and like just like being smart about it. But also what I want to talk about too is that the, also, the way to build a very, um, uh, you know, like sustaining community is that you don't want to uh, grow too fast. Is that a community that takes a long time to grow takes a long time to break. So it's taken me two years to get to where I'm at, and it'll, it like, I mean, you know, I guess in one tweet I could probably blow everything off. But the, the idea is that it's such a strong <laughs> community. Uh, that you know everything's authentic and it's like all like engaged people too. So that's the idea. And also, I, I want to talk about um, was the idea that um, that way that you build something too is that you don't build it by I'm sorry about that. Uh, is that is that you don't build by like getting uh, like a hundred people through one website. Like I have here like three or four sites. But that's about it. It's like the yeah, um, is that if you want to build a community of like of like hundred people, don't do it like hundred people through Facebook. Do like twenty five people through Facebook, twenty five people through email, twenty five people through you know through Twitter, twenty five here. And so accumulatively over time, you'll see that you have a community of like hundred people, and then you just grow on that on that foundation and make them work for you uh, and invest in your community in the way that you've invested in them. So my question was. Um, you know, uh, obviously, uh, even lots of musicians have uh, migrated to Facebook from MySpace, and MySpace uh, doesn't uh, figure except uh, with a lot of people anymore. Except that you have a, you're sort of aimed at a younger demographic, and you're doing music, and yet you're not on MySpace. So uh, I'm amazed. No, uh, MySpace is kind of. I think it's done. 
Uh, MySpace is more not about networking. It's more, um, you know, it's more like an entertainment portal. What's that? It's like a pimp my profile page. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I know, I mean, it's hard. I, I mean, I, you know, I'm on it, but I hate it. I don't. I haven't used it lately. But um, I mean, I, don't, I haven't gone into. Uh, and the gra everybody's graphics are awful. Uh, the, the, um, and there's ads everywhere, and things popping up for like, like, women and you know, and scantily clad women and stuff. But um, but yeah, because like, yeah, because that's annoying. Like you know, we don't want to see <laughs> hot chicks pop up. Like let's play <laughs> but, but um, but um. <laughs> So, so you you just I'm just curious. Did you try it at all? Did you? I did. It? I was all MySpace then, and I and I, I hated it. It was taking a lot of time out of my day, and I wasn't getting a good return on all of my investment. And time to me is more important than anything in the world. So like, I don't mind investing fifty bucks into something, but if I have to invest in, in like an hour into it, then I be, I better get a big 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 return on it. So when I have to invest time into MySpace and try to like find bands and maybe want to learn how to play guitar. Number one, it wasn't even my target market. Uh, and then number two, MySpace is done, and Facebook is growing, and then Twitter was growing. I've been on Twitter for years. That's why, like, a lot of the things too is that, um, is that like when I joined Twitter, I was I joined Twitter, uh, I think like 2000, November 2007. You know, and it's just like I was in that scene, and I networked with everyone when, when I had to. And if I if I jumped into it now, I don't think I would have made the big business connection that I made back then. Um, but then the idea is like I, I just choose like three sites, like three or four sites, and I just fucking kill it on you know on those sites. I just find everyone that I gotta talk to on those sites. I come out with great content, and I just really care about that. Like I care about them so much. Like I you know I call like my students a lot of times. Like if they're if they email me like a long question, I'm just like, dude Jim, just kill myself. I'm just calling it. This is great. Yeah, like, I don't play my thing. Uh, but yeah, but that's it. It's like I just care, you know. So. That's all. It's like you gotta care about your community. You gotta be authentic. You gotta, um, you know, do it every day. And then think of like monetization ways of like I do a like subscription based thing, but then I started thinking about how I leverage this. And so I also um, leverage like my Twitter community to my Facebook and my Facebook to my YouTube. And I kind of like you know have a lot of like overlap too. So, um, yeah, nice question. Where do you see, kind of really where do you see um, like your community going from the growth perspective or? Just doing things different. Is it more like a streamlined approach, or are you looking at new things to present to your community, or? Yeah, no. Like, I, okay. So, innovating is awesome. It's the only thing that I think that you know gets me up in the morning. It's like always wanting to like try something new. Okay. Uh, so what I'm doing now is I'm leveraging my community for this new business that I'm starting. Uh, but that the idea is that. When you're growing a community, it does tend to get dull because the problem with music lessons is that it doesn't scale. So, um, so like for example, when, when, when I say scale, like I've done about 400 tutorials, and I, I kind of like bottom out. Like I don't really know how many times I can teach eight minutes to people. You know, like, there's nothing really new about it. So that's why I'm like learning on something uh, new that's coming up. So like when I leverage these people. Like they like they always want something new. So what I'm doing here. What the hell? By the way, I curse a lot. As you can tell. Um, so like my new thing that I just started is called four. It's called four orchestra. And I basically like I take songs and I arrange them for orchestra, and that's pretty much it. But like I'm leveraging all of my online community for my music lessons onto my new site. And so that's and so that's pretty much it. Like keeping it innovative, like. Coming out with like new business models or like doing giveaways or you know cool little stuff like engaging in, in the actual community is uh, you know kind of keeping it interesting makes them keep on coming back. And when they keep coming back, then I keep getting paid for that too. So that's always good. Um, yeah, that, that's it. I mean, like, is, is everyone here familiar with Dig too? Or no? Yeah, totally. A little, yeah. Okay. A yeah. little. Can you explain it a little? Why it's useful? Well, uh, Dig. Yeah. Dig is a uh, okay. So the reason why it's useful is because Dig is like kind of like um, like the social proof uh, article looker searcher throughout the internet. So like it's everyone on the internet telling you what is good and what's not, or like what's topical and what's not. So um, if you dig something, the articles with the most digs get the front page of Dig. And the reason why it's good for this is because if I come out with a viral video. I'll shoot out to all my students who are now subscribed to me on Dig and be like, yo guys, can you help me out a couple of digs here? 
And once again, I'm, I'm asking them to invest in me. Like I'm making them, you know, be a part of me. Uh, so then they will, and they might talk with their friends. And so if my video gets on the front page of Dig, it gets tons of It's like, uh, Dig is like, what's, what's hot or what's bad or what's not? Yeah, so the way it works, um, by the way, it's 10.50. If anyone has to go, I'll hang and answer questions. Um, but like, Dig's, like, Here's like the upcoming page. And so articles that get dug, um, the most things get the front page, and then here's the most recent hot topics that are going on today. So the idea is that if I ask my students to put me on the front or to like give me a couple of digs, if I can get on the front page of dig and then shoot up to get a couple thousand digs, everyone who's going to this website sees what's going on. So basically, this is telling you like what's hot right now. It's basically like, you know. Like an RSS feed of like cool shit, but I don't know. And, and like some and some like like really stupid, it's like really funny, like you know comedy, like this is funny, like never under. I don't know. That's that's uh, about. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't want to click on anything because sometimes like the stuff on Twitter is like really, like, like you're scary, so I don't want to. Hey. Um, so yeah, are there are there any questions about that or like anything? Are you the chief technical officer as well? Who manages all of your your internet? Oh, I do. I do everything myself. Yeah. Everything. Uh, if I, I do have someone who wants to intern for me, uh, but I'm I'm thinking about other than that, and I, I don't even know. Like I don't I don't do anything myself. Yeah. One of the most effective things you did to get more subscribers. <sighs> Being topical. Yeah. Uh, this is what I said, you know, said before is that if Michael Jackson, not if, but like, you know, like when he died, I teach him a lesson on Michael Jackson, and Google is getting billions of hits on, you know, that day when he dies, and I better be the search term showing up for Michael Jackson music lessons. Like, everything, you know, like anything that's topical. If, um, you know, like, like my last vlog, and this is something new that I just started, that's why it's like, no one really knows about it yet, but, uh, so like Google Wave just came out. And so I wrote an article about like how's Google Wave gonna change music? And then, you know, if there's a, like a big thing that comes, you know, like that Tweety 2 just can't afford the iPhone. So I might, and this was yesterday, and so I, I might write about how Tweety 2 might change like the music world or something. So like that's the idea, is like being topical, but also like being authentic too. And giveaways are awesome. So whatever business you're starting, like it might cost you like 20 bucks to give away like a $20 shirt. But that the idea is that you use that as a lost leader to drive a shit ton of traffic back to your website and to sell man clothes or you know sell your music or to sell whatever. Like maybe like you give away one shirt, get everyone on Twitter talking about it, and you might get 15 more Twitter subscribers or 20 more subscribers. And although you can't put a money valuation on that. The money is in the long term, you know. So the idea is that um, oh, I think it's trying, 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 I don't know. Yeah, there's another question. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Are you all like? Oh, oh, you just coming out. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's you know, but that's the idea. So, all right. Thank you.